Hey everybody, what I'm working on here is a Danby DDR 5009 REE dehumidifier. Uh, I've already taken off the case so you can kind of see uh, what's going on here. This dehumidifier was uh, non-functional. It would turn on, the fan would run, and then after a couple minutes uh, it would turn itself back off and the little orange light would flash uh, on the circuit board here saying that the uh, bucket was full. This little red light. And uh, this one. And it would beep and it would turn off and that would be that. So I decided to fix this thing myself. It was 27 months old, three months out of warranty. And uh, here's what I've done. So I felt like, well, if it thinks it's full, maybe the float switch is bad. First thing I did was I found the uh, float switch here, which is uh, basically this little flapper. Come around the back here, you see the contact points. I removed the wires completely and then uh, jumpered them together to simulate a uh, closed contact and that did not fix the problem. Same symptoms occurred. The unit would turn on, the fan would run, the compressor would attempt to kick on and then it would turn itself off. Okay, so I said, what else could be causing this? Well, if you look right here, this is the freeze sensor. To prevent the unit from freezing, this wire went to the circuit board. I simply unplugged this and ran the unit again. Same symptoms would occur. So I said, well, maybe the thermal overload on the compressor is bad. So I took this cover off, bypassed the thermal uh, uh, protection device, and uh, did not fix the problem. So I thought to myself, let me see what's going on here. You know what? I got a bad circuit board. One of these two babies was messing me up. So I decided to get rid of them all together. They have been completely scrapped from the unit. And here's what I've done. This is line power coming in here. Black wire and white wire. I have hardwired this in according to this schematic, okay, which is on the inside of the back of the cover. So you can see, you got your line power here, white and black. The black wire goes around to a common connection where it meets with the red wire to the compressor. The white wire comes to a common connection where it meets to the blue wire that goes to the fan, and it meets to the blue wire that goes to the other side of the uh, uh, fan capacitor. Uh, excuse me, the blue wire that goes to the compressor ca capacitor and the white wire that goes to the other um, capacitor that runs the fan. And then I have here uh, a red and a yellow wire from the fan, which are uh, commonly grounded with the uh, red um, wire to the compressor or the black wire to the line, same system. So uh, what I found is that I cannot just take the line cord here with the black, white, and the ground and wire it directly up to the compressor motor and to the fan motor. Um, two things happened. Uh, for one thing, the compressor will not kick on every time reliably because it does not power up the cap. You have to allow the, the system to power up um, before the compressor tries to engage or it will not fire up the compressor every time. It will sit there and simply hum and just burn a lot of amps and short itself out. Uh, also, you need to be very careful, okay, from the fan here, uh, I have five wires, okay, the white and the blue go to this capacitor, polarity does not matter, you can put them however you want, I took them off and forgot which way they came off, it doesn't matter, okay, this red wire here is going to nowhere, that's the high speed fan, okay, I don't care about the high speed fan, that's going to be left disconnected, now here I've got my blue wire from the fan, which comes to a common connection, at the blue wire that goes to the capacitor for the compressor motor and the white wire which is my line white okay so those three are there now this connection here is the hot wire for the fan motor okay yellow which hooks up to my black wire to my line and then I have my other black wire coming off of this common connection going to a simple light switch which then runs to the compressor motor itself so what this allows the system to do is to charge up the capacitor, uh, gets the fan running, 
It allows you to de-ice the fan because now your de-icer is uh, no longer functional or your, your uh, freeze protection. So here we go. All I've got to do to fire this baby up is plug it in. Okay. The fan is running. You can see that or not. Let me put something in there. Okay. The fan is running. And now the compressor, all I have to do to turn the compressor on is flick my switch. It sounds nice and quiet. It's running great. It's got a good solid connection. And this dehumidifier is back in action, boys and girls. There is no need to replace this unit. This dehumidifier is working 100% functionally now. Uh, what I would recommend is that you run a hose into a sink uh, off of the drain because there is no longer any uh, overflow protection on the bucket. And also, I would recommend that you hook up some kind of a timer here. Maybe, maybe put a timer on an hour, you know, run a timer an hour uh, off and on so that uh, it doesn't overfreeze itself because this unit will freeze. Uh, this thing is cooking. This thing is cold. And this, this unit right here is hot. So it is working beautifully now. Uh, there is no need to have to replace this dehumidifier. This was a $290 unit. It requires special recycling to get rid of the refrigerant that is located in the system. And uh, hopefully this will help you to get rid of all this bullshit junk circuit board crap that was destined to fail. Get rid of all these dumbass connections that were hooked everything up. Hardwire your system into the line power and hook it up to a switch so you can kill the compressor and turn the compressor on and off at will. And that will uh, allow you to de-ice the unit while the, with the fan running and also keep the compressor from hard start. It allows the capacitor to charge up so that you can get a real good fire on your compressor when you activate the switch. All right, everyone. Enjoy.